I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we dive into the gripping political drama of Inheritance of Crises and Dysfunction by an amazing author by the name of James Mywarn. This novel takes readers on a journey through the challenges faced by a new U.S. administration, blending political intrigue with personal struggles. Join us as we explore the story of Salt Pepper and his clandestine diplomatic mission that spans the globe. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Books to Life Marketing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing this amazing book. The links are below this interview. James, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Well, Logan, I'm glad to be here with you and your, your audience. Living and working in D.C., obviously, you know a lot about crises and dysfunctions in Washington and uh, in government. I, I guess, in part, that's the motivation for writing this book. It was. There, there is plenty of crises and motivation. You're exactly right there. But uh, what motivated the, the book was the reality, an understanding of that reality, put together with the fact that you worry about things that could be happening or not happening, as the case may be, uh, that have dramatic impacts over time. And you can think about uh, what happens tomorrow, next month, next year, or you can think about what happens to uh, your, your children and your grandchildren. And uh, that, to me, was my focus. Is what are we doing our, to ourselves uh, that is not fixable uh, in the long run or the short run? And mm -hmm. those are things we need to be worried about, and there are a number of those things out there. And it requires, uh, I think, an emphasis and understanding on the part of the middle, the middle of our country, the middle geographically and the middle politically and the middle, and the middle economically. I'm a big believer in the middle of the of America and its strength, perhaps because I grew up there. Uh, but I think it's important to get those folks all engaged and uh, in dialogue with friends and family about what needs to be done. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think there's a whole industry out there now profiting on political divisions, whether it's Fox or MSNBC or Facebook or what have you. Uh, the more divisive they can be, the more clicks they get, the more money they get. It's kind of a uh, terrible, terrible system, that's for sure. Let's talk a little bit about Salt Pepper and uh, that character. Tell us a little okay. bit about him. Well, Salt is a guy who uh, comes from, to some, to some extent, from middle America. Uh, he uh, worked in the government for a long period of time. He's a trained lawyer, but he works in the trade area, the international trade area. And so has had a lot of experience over the course of a career, uh, having done stuff that's re relative uh, to what we're talking about here today. Uh, he starts down the retirement road, and he decides after his wife uh, died, unfortunately, as a result of COVID, to uh, go back to the family farm, which is in the, near the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia, and uh, make a new life for himself uh, out in the middle of nowhere. And it turns out that the middle of nowhere is not the middle of nowhere. It's it's a it's a place where there has to be a lot of activity. And what we're trying to do in the book is show elements of middle America or middle Europe or middle Asia that are affected by what's going on in the world politically, uh, environmentally, uh, you name it, there's a lot going on. And so what we're trying to do is show all of these various facets of life in the world that are coming together and creating problems, challenges, and opportunities for people like Salt. And he gets called back into the government uh, in, a, in part of a new administration. Uh, he goes into sort of a clandestine type of operation working out of the White House, but he's really a fix, he, you know, he's sort of like a Mr. Fixer, mm -hmm. fix it. And so that's what we're looking for is people who, who want to think about how do you solve problems as well as identify them. And how do we get the middle class involved in helping develop those solutions? And how do we have people talking at one another, but also with one another uh, in order to get some of these things accomplished? Absolutely. Can you share some of the real world events and issues that influence the plot of the book? Well, it really it, it relies a lot on reality. It's a novel, so it's it's not intended to be 
the truth in whole or in part or even, even entirely, but it's, in, it's, it's inspired, if you can use the word inspired uh, in the connection of this topic, it's, it's, it's inspired by what's going on. And so, you know, I, I, I actually started writing this book about at the beginning of the COVID crisis. Mm. And uh, I was uh, contemplating retirement at the time. And I was wondering, what could I do to make a difference? You know, all of us uh, sometime in our life want to be able to make a difference. And one of the things I wanted to do was to be able to communicate some of the issues that Salt Pepper is dealing with in terms of international operations, environmental concerns, uh, things like uh, you know Kuwait uh, years ago, and now with uh, what's going on in the Middle East. And so what we wanted to do was use salt pepper as a vehicle to travel around the world, identify and hopefully spark some discussion about some of these issues that we're dealing with on a global basis or on a, on a local basis. And this, this goes from the, the men's shop in downtown nobody's place, Mm -hmm. or the, uh, the the barber shop, or the uh, the hardware store, or you can actually buy a hammer as opposed to something that has electricity running through it. And so it's it's trying to say this is the real world for many of our citizens and many of our citizens in in places like Europe. Uh, but we have to figure out how to deal with them constructively uh, with one another, not against one another. And salt is just the vehicle that we use because of his governmental experience, lots of international experience, lots of experience in the United States. So you blend all of this together. And if it's working well and together, as opposed to in opposition to one another, uh, things can be accomplished. And that's what they're trying to do in the story of the book. But it's also trying to say, this, look, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we need to do as citizens of the world, of Northern Virginia, of the mountains, and uh, you name it, we've all got to climb together. And this, this election that we're about to have is going to be probably the most important election uh, that, I, that I participate in during my life. Mm -hmm. And so being worried about the election and how it's going to be uh, carried out and how it's going to be complicated by things that are still around the world by, you know, bearing from the last presidential election, uh, you can imagine uh, things could become a lot more interesting than we would like them to be. Why don't you think elections are more defined, if you will? I mean, it isn't rocket scientists, but you have mail-in ballots, drop-off boxes, uh, long periods of voting, one day to vote, uh, no ID required. I mean, why isn't it more uh, uniform? Well, it, you know, it goes back to the sort of the history of the United States in a lot of ways. You know, when the, when this country was formed, there was a there was a dialogue between those who were the so-called federalists, like Alexander Hamilton, and those who were more independent and uh, operated more on an independence approach to life. And uh, there was a lot of negotiation between the smaller states in terms of population, the smaller colonies, and the larger states in terms of population. And so, what you see today in things like voting, local voting, uh, regional voting, state voting, uh, how much preference is given to people who are who are in various categories of, uh, of uh, employment in various places in terms of what they need in terms of help. Uh, all of those blend together, but there, there is definitely, you know, and we saw it, you know, in, in spades during the last, uh, you mm -hmm. know, six, 12, 18 months, is you're, you're still living with decisions and compromises that were made when the when the country was formed, and you don't have to like it, but it's it's a reality, uh, and uh, we need to figure out how to deal with that. It's a you know, it's a real conundrum because you want to maintain that balance, but that goes back to what I was talking about earlier: the middle. Where is the middle of America? It's not you know we we're not hearing enough from the middle about the middle by the middle, and uh, that's what we want to be looking toward. We only hear from the extremes on the left and the right. Most people, you know, are in the middle. Like you said, uh, they're middle class. They live in middle America. They have middle class values and they have common sense, which seems to be lacking in this era for sure. What message do you hope readers take away about leadership and the need for innovative uh, solutions in today's world from reading your book? 
Well, I think what we want to do is go back to the concept of uh, working together, as you just articulated. Uh, mm. We have to, you know, there's got to be more opportunity to do more in concert with one another than separately. And when you see people who are more concerned about repeating, uh, you know, January 6th or 9th or 12th or whatever yeah. uh, that people start talking about, uh, then you, you're worried about that. We don't we don't need people breaking apart into into groups of people that think they are un, they are wasted talent. And mm -hmm. I think what we want to do is we got to force people into thinking positively about this is where I can fit in and make a difference. This is the talent I bring. And here's an opportunity, by the way, uh, for those people to fit in. These are, you know, uh, I grew up in Ohio, in, in literally literally in the middle of America. And in some, case, in some cases, people say the middle of nowhere. But that's okay. Because mm -hmm. the middle of nowhere is a, is a place where there's a lot of cultural value and a lot of attention to people who are down the street, around the corner, or in the next town. And so uh, that's that's there's nothing wrong with that group of people at all. That's what we want to foster, not not discourage. And exactly. so, uh, really, that's a that's a part of the United States that's important in all of this. And those of us who tend to forget that are making a big big mistake because we there's a lot of help out there in all phases of our country and indeed in all phases of the world. As Jimmy Stewart's character said in It's a Wonderful Life, these people that you call rabble, Mr. Potter, do most of the living and dying in this country. And uh, I think that we are treated like um, the rabble by a lot of potters out there who uh, view the political landscape as their chessboard. And uh, it's uh, to their folly and uh, to our dismay, that's for sure. This book is an important book. It's a political drama. It's called Inheritance, Crises, and Dysfunction. It's written by James Myworm. It is a novel that takes you, uh, takes readers on a journey through the challenges faced by a new U.S. administration, and it blends political intrigue with personal struggles as well. It'll get you to think about our country, think about the state of elections and politics in the year 2024 and beyond, and uh, hopefully get you thinking towards creating some solutions as well. James, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan, and thanks for your help. I appreciate your time, sir. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.